hey guys welcome back to my channel so now uh, i'm going to talk about the paramyxoviridae family in the last video i talked about the orthomyxoviridae family in which i talked about the orthomyxovirus that was influenza virus right so we have already talked about the influenza virus in detail now i'm going to talk about the para influenza virus right so what you should know about the para influenza virus yes first of all uh, that paramyxovirus it comes from the family of paramyxoviridae okay as the name suggests para para influenza so influenza was from the family of orthomyxoviridae and i was calling that as orthomyxovirus now para influenza virus comes from the category of paramyxoviridae so i will uh, <clears throat> tell para influenza virus as this is para mixovirus right so this is the para mixovirus first thing okay next thing is uh, let me introduce this virus to you so this is an enveloped virus so this is also an enveloped virus okay this is also an enveloped virus and <clears throat> influenza was also enveloped virus second thing it is <clears throat> influenza virus was segmented negative sense single stranded rna virus and this para influenza virus is non segmented so that is the main difference over here okay so this is actually what this is non segmented secondly <clears throat> this is also negative sense okay so this is also negative sense single stranded rna virus okay so this is also negative sense single stranded rna virus okay now what is the route of transmission if uh, somebody will ask you what is the route of transmission of this one so let me tell you over here so for the route of transmission right okay so now let's talk about the route of transmission route of transmission will be same because as this is virus most of the virus goes inside your body with what yes with what respiratory secretions right so here also i will say respiratory droplets right so what can i say over here yes that is that's going to be respiratory droplets right okay now next thing let's talk about uh, <clears throat> the affection of this parent influenza virus it usually affects the children okay so you can say this is the pediatric age group virus okay and what it causes it actually causes the croup it actually causes what croup and secondly it causes bronchiolitis okay it causes croup and it causes bronchiolitis in children okay so it causes croup and it causes <clears throat> bronchiolitis in children okay so these thing i am talking about what i am talking about these kind of things in <coughs> children right croup is also having the another name croup is also called as acute acute laryngo acute laryngo tracheo bronchitis okay acute laryngo tracheo bronchitis okay so this is causing in children <coughs> one more thing i would like to tell you bronchitis in children it is causing in less than 2 years of age okay less than 2 years of age and as i told you this is a pediatric age group virus okay usually okay and it's gonna damage the lungs it's gonna damage the upper respiratory tract infection as well okay and let's talk about the structure of this virus yeah so it looks something like this okay so this one over here is the fusion peptide over here okay so this is the fusion peptide which is these structures these spikes over here this one okay this one this one is what this one is h and tetramer okay this is actually h n tetramer h and tetramer means like hemagglutinin and neuraminidase okay remember in influenza virus i told you that there is a hemagglutinin glycoprotein and the neuraminidase glycoprotein on the surface of it one more thing i told you influenza and para influenza both are enveloped okay so look at this en uh, envelope over here okay so this is covered by what this is covered by what this is covered by this envelope right next thing i told you there are now in, in influenza i told you about the two glycoproteins on the surface of it that was hemagglutinin okay denoted by h and neuraminidase denoted by n okay 
and heme agglutinin was uh, for the binding and uh, neuraminidase was helping in the fusion of the uh, virus going into the <coughs> uh, respiratory uh, epithelium right over here there are three proteins one is h that is hemagglutinase hemagglutinin another one is n and the next one is what fusion peptide next one is what fusion peptide okay so there are three kind of virulence factor i would say okay there are th three kinds of virulence factors <coughs> okay there are what there are three there are three virulence okay virulence factors okay so three virulent factors are there and what are the three virulent factor fusion peptide neuraminidase and hemagglutinin right okay <clears throat> next thing which you can see over here that is matrix protein <coughs> okay so these structures over here these structures over here which you can see over here that is the matrix protein denoted by m lipid bilayer okay so this one this is what lipid bilayer influenza virus was also having the lipid bilayer influenza virus was also having the envelope and look at the genetic material of this virus it is actually having the large rna polymerase protein okay it is actually having the phospholipids with themselves it is actually having the nucleocapsid which uh, is denoted by np these are the nucleocapsids over here smaller one right there's a nucleocapsid this is the polypeptide over here okay and <clears throat> this is the this structure is what this is what this is the yes negative sense single stranded rna virus obviously right so this is about the structure of this is about the structure of what para influenza virus right okay <clears throat> moving further okay so that was the h and tetramer which i was talking about okay now let's talk about the pathogenesis of pathogenesis of pa uh, para influenza virus okay so <clears throat> this is uh, this this structure over here is our virus okay so this one over here which you can appreciate this is our para influenza virus okay okay so this is our para influenza virus right now next thing which you need to understand <coughs> that it will be look first step what is that that is binding okay that is binding that will be our first step okay binding will be happening with the help of hemagglutinin fusion will the will be happening with the help of fusion protein so there is additional fusion proteins are over there in the parent influenza virus structure third step what will be there look there are the sialic acid on the uh, look this is the uh, respiratory uh, mucosa right the respiratory mucosa and over here you are having the sialic acid by the help of which this uh, even the influenza and parent influenza both the virus can attach to it can bind to it and there can be the fusion right and then now next step will be what next step third step will be uncoating of the genetic material of this para influenza virus so yes you can see over here there are large uh, polypeptide there is smaller nucleocapsid right so all these things are uh, there so this is the uh, negative sense uh, single stranded rna virus okay negative sense single stranded rna virus now this negative sense single stranded rna virus must be converted into positive sense single stranded <coughs> rna virus with the help of what okay so you can see over here this is the positive sense and this is the negative sense still right so this step over here will be happening with the help of what yes this step will be here will be happening with the help of positive okay with the help of what uh, rna dependent rna polymerase <coughs> okay so in short i am writing it over here as rna polymerase okay rna polymerase right rna polymerase so with the help of rna polymerase negative one is actually converting into positive one okay negative one is actually converting into positive one right next step will be what now again this uh, positive one will be con has to convert into negative one okay again this positive one has to convert into negative one 
yes because it has to make its new copies right and now this virus this virus over here this the genetic material of this virus is actually uh, <coughs> uh, will be actually reaching up to the again this cell membrane of the host right and finally what will be happening yes so look uh, first step was uh, budding uh, binding sorry second step was fusion third step was uncoating fourth step will be replication inside it so fourth step will be what replication replication will be happening after the conversion of the negative sense uh, into the positive sense then again there will be a, a conversion of what conversion of positive into <coughs> negative sense uh, single stranded RNA virus and then next step will be what next step will be uh, it will be reaching up to the uh, cell membrane it will be reaching up to the cell membrane of the host and then there will be budding right so budding will be our fifth step and next step will be what release of this new virus so that will be the sixth step of this virus okay so that was about what uh, and meanwhile uh, i told you that uh, in the cell membrane the cell membrane of the host there are the receptors of the sialic acid okay so i told you tomato sialic acid which helps in binding of this virus so these are the sialic acid receptors <coughs> okay so that was about that was about the <coughs> pathogenesis of single pathogenesis of single stranded rna virus which is what para influenza virus okay fine <coughs> so if you talk about the presentation of this para influenza virus so what will be the symptoms of the patient okay so let's talk about the symptoms of the patient so what will be the symptoms of the patient right so there can be a fever in the patient which in which uh, like all in all the viral infection there can be a fever in the patient because your body temperature will be increasing right then the particular finding which you'll be seeing over here that is actually seal like seal like barking cough okay seal like barking cough in group okay seal like barking cough in group okay so that is the particular finding which you need to look for in the patient to make sure that uh, your diagnosis is uh, really parent friends of virus and your diagnosis is really group okay one more thing let me tell you that group uh, the you know uh, parent friends of virus para influenza virus is the most common para influenza virus is the most common cause of group okay para influenza virus is the most common cause of group okay so let me write it over here for you guys that para influenza virus para influenza virus is the most common cause for the group right so this thing you must remember okay this thing you must remember because it's very important for the exams purpose right <coughs> okay now next thing is about the presentation we were talking about that uh, fever can be there seal like barking cough in group can be there okay what else <coughs> what else you may find uh, you know there can be the shortness of breath so uh, shortness of breath means I want to say that difficulty in breathing okay so there can be difficulty in breathing part okay there can be the streeter and which kind of streeter I am talking about I am talking about the inspiratory streeter look there are three kinds of streeter uh, there can be inspiratory there can be expiratory and there can be biphasic and over this in this case there can be the inspiratory streeter and that is also a very particular finding in group okay and what is streeter streeter means that uh, there will uh, there can be there will be actually <coughs> uh, you know whistle like sound okay there will be what whistling sound will be heard because of the narrowing whistling sound will be heard because of the narrowing of the uh, larynx region over there right that's why there can be the inspiratory streeter right okay so these can be some of the findings uh, these can be some of the symptoms of the patient who is having the group uh, and that is most common cause of the group we already know that that is the that can be para influenza virus okay 
right so now let's talk about the imaging part over here in the imaging means uh, in the imaging means uh, i need to uh, look for the imaging purpose which means that uh, i need to look for the chest radiography okay and chest radiography means what ct scan right so chest radiography in the chest radiography chest radiography okay what you will be looking for you will be going for the x-ray <coughs> okay you will be going for what x-ray images right you will be going for the x-ray images and what will be the findings over there you need to look for you need to look for what you need to look for group okay in the x-ray you need to look for group how can you identify the group over there yes you can identify the group by seeing the subglotic narrowing over there okay you need to look for what you need to look for subglotic narrowing in the x-ray subglotic narrowing in the x-ray near the larynx region okay now wait a second what do i mean by subglotic narrowing yes let's talk about the subglotic narrowing and one more one very important sign will be seen by the subglotic uh, narrowing over there and i am talking about that if the subglotic narrowing is there i am talking about which sign over there yes i am talking about the steeple sign okay which sign i am talking about i am talking about the steeple sign over here steeple sign very very important finding of the group again right so if i'm talking about this much things so i told you about the chest radiography you need to look for the chest radiography and you know series uh, sorry x-ray uh, you need to look for croup <clears throat> okay in the croup what can be the finding in the glottis region there can be the narrowing we are calling that a steeple sign so let me talk about the image over here so in the image it will be much much clear okay so look at this image over here so what can i see now look what can i see over here i can see that look at this sign okay so if i will see yes it is looking something like that okay so can you admire that okay i will draw that once again okay so please look over this one so look at this arrow over here so it is like this okay it is like this so it's kind of a steeple so that this thing okay so this thing over here this thing over here they want to tell you what they want to tell you that this patient is having croup okay so this sign this is what this is subglotic narrowing right what else can i say which sign i told you this one this sign is actually called as what this sign is actually called as steeple sign this sign is actually called as steeple sign <coughs> okay so this sign over here is steeple steeple sign okay so this sign i was talking about so this is the steeple sign this is the finding of what yes this is the finding of group in our patient and most common cause what is the causative agent <clears throat> most common causative agent for the group yes that is actually para influenza virus okay so i hope that makes sense with this image right okay now moving further now let's talk about the studies now let's talk about the uh, diagnosis part over here okay so for the diagnosis one <coughs> we need to look for <coughs> so yes let's talk about the diagnosis over here now and in the diagnosis part we need to look for what we need to look for the <clears throat> clinical presentation so you know most of the patients actually uh, what kind of clinical uh, on the basis of clinical presentation only we need to look for para, para influenza virus right so it depends on clinical presentation Net, next thing to confirm you need you can go for the pcr that is polymerase chain reaction okay and for most of the viruses we are doing the polymerase chain reaction that is pcr okay and next thing which i can do over here uh, what is the treatment right so further what is the treatment for such patients right treatment is really supportive okay so you need to go for the supportive care treatment okay 
so supportive care treatment will be there and supportive care means uh, if there is fever give some kind of antipyretics there is pain give analgesics okay hydrate your patient give the iv fluids to your patient okay so this can be the supportive care and with that you can give actually uh, steroids okay you can give what you can give steroids to your patient steroids to your patient and then you may give the nebulized nebulized api api means nebulized api means nebulized uh, epinephrine i mean to say or adrenaline right <coughs> you are giving that for you are giving that for group okay and what was the finding of the group yes steeple sign subglottic narrowing in the x-ray okay so that was about the para influenza virus